Welcome to Electron Online. Since I received horizontal uh, start over, yes. Yeah, you never tell me what to do. I know, but so sorry. No. If not going to do, it, it's going to be terrible. She's <laughs> got me. <laughs> You're stubborn. All right, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> All right, welcome to Electron Online. Based upon some questions I received from viewers regarding forces acting at an angle on objects either on horizontal surface or on inclined planes. So the first example is we have an object on a horizontal surface. There's a coefficient of static friction between the object and the surface of point 4. There's a force acting on it at an angle of 30 degrees relative to the horizontal. And the question is, what is the maximum force we can apply to the block before the block starts moving? All right, based upon that, let's first determine all of the forces acting on that block. Well, first of all, we have the force of gravity acting downward. So we have mg. And then we have this force right here, which acts at an angle, which means there is a horizontal force. And there is a vertical component of that force. So this is the vertical component, F sub y, which is therefore equal to F times D. Now we have to be careful, because this would be the opposite side to the angle. So we have F times the sine of theta. For the vertical component and for the horizontal component, we have F sub x, which is equal to F times the cosine of theta. So that would be the adjacent side to the angle. Now that means that this component is also acting down on the floor, so it's pushing this way with the, with the force F times the sine of theta. And then we have the normal force pushing back, which is going to be the sum of these two forces in the opposite direction. So the normal force is equal to mg plus the F sine theta, which is the vertical component of that particular force. And it's only the horizontal component which is pushing the block to the right. Now the block is not going to move until this horizontal component of the force is greater than the friction force caused by this normal force. The friction force, and let me use a different color for that, the friction force would be the force pushing this way, force friction, which is equal to the normal force times mu, and of course in this case the normal force is the sum of these two forces, so that would be equal to mg plus the force applied to the block times the sine of theta, all multiplied times mu. And now we can say is that the block will not move until the force in the x direction, the component in the x direction, exceeds the friction force. At that point, the block will begin to move. So as long as the force is equal to or less than that force, the block will not move. So we're looking for the F sub x being smaller than the friction force and so in this case smaller than or equal to go all the way up to equal to and the f sub x would be f times the cosine of theta it must be smaller or equal to the friction force which is the normal force mg plus f times the sine of theta multiplied times mu and now all we have to do is solve for f so first we're going to multiply this through, we get F times the cosine of theta, less than or equal to, here we have mg mu plus F sine theta times mu. Then we move all the, the components or all the terms that have an F in it to the left side of the equation. So F times the cosine of theta minus F times the sine of theta times mu must be less than or equal to mg mu. And then if we factor out an f, and let me move over here, we can then say that f times the cosine of theta minus the sine of theta times mu must be less than or equal to mg mu. And then divide both sides by what's in the parentheses. That means f must be less than or equal to mg mu divided by the cosine of theta minus the sine theta times mu. Now all we have to do is plug in some numbers, and do we have numbers? Well, I have the mass, I have the coefficient of friction, and I, oh well, f is what we're looking for, so I think we're good. 
So that should be f less than or equal to 5 times 9.8 times, that would be 0 0.4 divided by the cosine of 30 degrees minus the sine of 30, whoop, of 30 degrees multiplied times 0 0.4. All right, now we get a calculator and let's see what that force is equal to. So the, uh, let's start with the denominator. We have the sine of 30 is 0 0.5 times 0 0.4, that's 0 0.2, subtract that from the cosine of 30. Okay, take the inverse of that, bring it to the denominator, multiply times 5, multiply times 9.8, and times 0 0.4, and we get a force of 29.4 newtons, which means that as long as the applied force at the angle of 30 degrees is less than or equal to 29.4 newtons, the block will remain stationary and the friction force will be enough to resist any form of movement or acceleration. And that's how it's done.